In this session, we will be dealing with single phase full converters. It can also be called as a fully controlled bridge rectifier. Fully controlled bridge converter. It is a B2 converter. Because it's bridge and two pulses in a period, two pulses in the output. So it is a single phase fully controlled bridge converter, or else we can call it as full converter. I'll draw the circuit diagram first. The circuit actually comprises of four SCRs, or the four devices are thyristors or SCRs, that's why it is called fully controlled so input is ac so i'll draw the input ac source and the output we expect is the converter converted output or rectified output so input will be giving at these two uh, terminals and four ACS connected in a bridge format so these are marked as t1 t2 t3 and T4 and the load is connected at the output terminals load let it be a practical R load okay so we will mark the source voltage as Vs and the source current as Is and output voltage is say V0 and the load parameters are R and L and the current flowing through the load is I0 current flowing through thyristor T1 it is IT1 voltage across it is say VT1 okay. now we will try to draw the waveform So let us now consider a uh, input sine wave, which is the AC input. Okay. So this let this be your input voltage waveform. You can mark it as say these two terminals you can mark it as a this terminal and this terminal let it be b so that this voltage i can also mark it as b a b this is your supply voltage b s and if i draw the counter one or if we draw the voltage v b a with respect to B while plotting voltage of A with respect to B if we mark it as V A B we can mark the voltage of B the point B with respect to A as V B A no? so this is your B, B in dotted lines. Okay. Now let us trigger the SES at this point. SES T1 and T2 according to this configuration. T1, T2 will be triggered here at an angle say alpha from the starting of the positive half cycle and from the starting of the negative half cycle again after an angle alpha that is phi plus alpha we will be triggering at this point the triggering signal will be given to T3 and T4 okay so first we will see discontinuous conduction
discontinuous conduction what happens is current output current become zero or there are there is no continuity in current flow that's why it is called a discontinuous conduction so if we trigger this SCRs T1 and T2 once the SCRs are being triggered know that the source voltage it is a positive end here and negative here from the source positive side through T1 current is flowing through RL coming back through T2 to the source back that is the path so at this time current goes from this say it is coming from zero increases then getting down here okay so accordingly the voltage waveform you can show it as this is your voltage from this point you are triggering that is here so this from this point you will get the output voltage no so output voltage will be same as VAB like this this will be your VAB output voltage sorry will be same as your supply input and uh, these SCRs will continue to function till the current becomes zero and the current becomes zero at this point called beta okay here actually we having triggered the next two SCRs so the next two SCRs are triggered only at pi plus alpha and before reaching that point I will mark it clearly here this is the point of triggering for T3 and T4 so before that this current become 0 ok <clears throat> at this point current become 0 so till then the SES will conduct and how it conducts in the negative half cycle SES how does SES conduct because SCR current actually is SCR is current conducting current is flowing unidirectional but the voltage across the SCRs are reverse that's all but current is not reverse current is flowing in the same direction but uh, the output voltage reversed so what happens is the energy stored in this inductor it is being fed back so i can explain it in some other way like if this is your current graph this your this pink color it was v naught and with red line it shows the current graph i naught okay now what will be if this current is a I naught, that I naught into R will be voltage across the resistor VR, which is equal to I naught into R. Okay, I'll try to draw that also. So if this is your, if this is your this green line represent draw it with some firm line okay. your, if this this is your i naught into r or it is v r which is nothing but i zero into r okay so here you could see some equation once the scs are conducting the input voltage is there if say T1 it is conducting and there is some R and L here there is a T2 this is your T1 
your P2, this is your source voltage Vs, AC is input and here is the load where we are expecting the DC output. So this is your R and L. So this equation pertaining to this situation when T1 and T2 are conducting. This we can write it as if the current is say I0. You can write it as Vs is equal to V0. If we neglect the draw of sector of T1 and T2, which is nothing but I0 into R plus L into di by dt, di0 by dt. Okay. So the inductor energy or the voltage across the inductor, we can L into di by dt, we can get it as V0 minus I0 into R. So here now we have seen that this is your this is your V0. And this is your I0 into R. Okay. So the difference between the two is this portion and this portion. And this will be equal and opposite. This is actually di by dt in the increasing mode, or current increasing mode, di by dt positive. This is actually current decreasing mode. So di by dt negative because once the current is increasing mode means this will be the direction of I mean polarity. So once di by dt decreases you know the as per Lenz's law uh, it will change its polarity now. So this will be the uh, polarity later on. So this is the stored energy or this region represents the uh, voltage across the inductor and uh, the stored energy in the inductor is liberated into the resistive load during the second session okay that is what is happening in the uh, in this case in the full converter so with this stored energy or with this inductor voltage actually the current actually flows like this this region that's why the voltage Output voltage is getting the resultant voltage means the net voltage between I naught R plus L into D A by D T that is V naught that is reversed for this duration from this point to this point. Okay. So here you could see current graph actually starts from zero and goes to zero here. Okay. And uh, in the next half cycle, once the uh, SES T3 and T4 are triggered, we will get the output voltage again like this, it is coming like this and it will continue till this 2 pi plus beta point. This was your beta, this was your 2 pi plus alpha, sorry, pi plus alpha, pi plus alpha, okay, this is 2 pi and this is the next beta okay next beta means starting from pi so pi plus beta this point okay this pink color actually shows the v naught graph in the case of a discontinuous conduction mode and the current graph is this one here the current graph will be this red one shows the current graph current will be coming to zero at this point okay so if we draw the current graph here there will be a beta point so like this from this to this there is a break then current increases like this coming to this point here at beta then there is zero current then increases beta zero like that now we can see there is discontinuity here there is a discontinuity so that's why it is called a discontinuous conduction mode okay and the voltage graph is this pink color graph okay it's again coming to zero here okay that's it Next, we will be moving on to continuous conduction mode.
So in continuous convection mode, what happens is current will be continuous. It is happening because the inductance is so high or the uh, induct stored energy in the inductor will make the current to continuously flow or it won't cease before the next firing of the two or SES in the next half cycle. So with the same circuit for a continuous conduction mode, the circuit will be the same, the full converter circuit as we have seen earlier. This is the circuit and let me redraw it. This was the circuit diagram with the four SCRs. Input as an AC, single phase AC input. Let this four devices be four SCRs. Okay. It is marked like T1, T2, T3 and T4. This is your VS. And a RL load is connected. Okay. Now in continuous conduction mode, Let this be our input source voltage VS. Okay. So here we'll be switching on the two devices at an angle alpha T1 and T2. So in a continuous conduction mode, on this point actually current flows. So voltage across the output load, this will be your output voltage. So this will be your V naught also, okay, and the current actually starts from a high value, it increases in coming down, but at this point, we'll be switching on the next two SCS. So, let this be T3, T4, at an angle, this is here pi, pi plus alpha. So the output voltage we form, if we look into, it will be like this. So this is your output voltage we form. This red color graph actually shows the output voltage we form. Okay, it is coming down like this. This is 2 pi. This is 2 pi plus alpha. Like that it goes. Whereas the current waveform will be like this. And we can extend it backwards. So forth. Okay. So this is V naught. And this is our I naught graph. Okay. And this is alpha. This is pi plus alpha. This point it is 2 pi plus alpha. Okay. So this happens because the inductance stored energy in the, the inductance is so high. So current continues for a prolonged duration like this. Okay. And uh, with this 
these waveforms from these uh, output voltage waveform we can obtain the average value of output voltage vdc as vdc or v not average yes. average value of output voltage we can write it as it is repeating in nature periodic so 1 by pi integral alpha to say pi plus alpha from alpha to pi plus alpha it is existing there so it is vm sin omega alpha to pi plus alpha vm sin omega t t of omega t so this will be equal to 1 by pi into vm into integral sin omega t it will be minus cos omega t so within limits alpha to pi plus alpha so it will be vm by pi it will be minus cos omega t it is minus cos of pi plus alpha minus minus cos alpha so it will be plus cos alpha so this will be vm by pi into minus cos of pi plus alpha it is minus cos alpha so minus minus cos alpha so it will be plus cos alpha so cos alpha plus cos alpha so it will be so it will be equal to 2 vm by pi cos alpha v not average will be equal to in a full converter with rl load we got the equation as 2 vm by pi cos alpha and v not rms is equal to rms value of voltage we can find it as say v not rms square of that let it be equal to 1 by pi integral alpha to pi plus alpha vm square sin square omega t to d of omega t so that is it will be vm square by pi integral alpha to pi plus alpha 1 minus cos 2 omega t divided by 2 into d of omega t so that we can write it as So that is equal to Vm square by 2 pi into it will be omega t minus sin 2 omega t by 2 within limits alpha to pi plus alpha. So that is equal to Vm square by 2 pi into pi plus alpha minus alpha minus half into sine of 2 omega t it is 2 into pi plus 2 alpha so 2 pi plus 2 alpha we can write that minus sine 2 alpha so that is equal to vm square by 2 pi into this is pi plus alpha minus alpha so it is pi minus half into this term will be sine 2 alpha minus sine 2 alpha no? so that will be 0 no so this term will be 0 so we will get it as So it is equal to Vm square by 2 pi into pi that is equal to Vm square by pi sorry Vm square by 2 so therefore we can write V naught RMS is equal to 
root of this no em square by 2 which is equal to em by root 2 or else which is same as the input rms value of source voltage rms value of the input source voltage okay so next we will be dealing with single phase full converter with rle load not much change from the earlier circuit here only thing is in instead of the load as rl here it is rle means uh, you can the application one of the application of the uh, single phase uh, converters are uh, the small dc drives we are using so dc drive you know that it is having an instead of an rl element it is having a back emf which is very much represented by this active load rle say very much equivalent to a dc motor so uh, we'll try to first of all we'll try to draw the waveforms corresponding to this say t1 t2 t3 and t4 let it be the cs okay and the output current is say i0 and the voltage across the load it is say v0 okay and source current is say i yes okay now we'll try to draw the waveforms corresponding to the terminal say b try draw the voltage waveform let this be your source voltage which is vs okay and uh, this battery source e can be represented by let this be your battery voltage e okay let us draw the voltage waveforms this is your v a b and let this be your v b a so once the So your output voltage waveform will be like this. This will be your output voltage waveform. With the, this angle alpha, this is pi, this is pi plus alpha, this is 2 pi, like that. Okay. And this is your V naught. And if we draw the I naught. over the same graph let me draw i naught this will be i naught graph okay. so this will be i naught also in the working you know once the once this t1 and t2 are triggered at an angle alpha current starts flowing like this 
through T2 like that. So the circuit will be like T1 at us conducting and uh, T2 also conducting. So here is your input supply voltage. Okay. So this, these two are the conducting devices T1 and T2. We have the RLE load here. Okay. So now this is the path. Now when this T3 and T4 are triggered when it is forward biased in the negative half cycle. So at that time what will happen? The SES were T1, T2 were already conducting. So uh, earlier this was the case plus minus. Now it is in the negative half cycle. So it is changed like this. So this through the conducting SES T1 and T2. The conducting SES T1 means here it was your uh, T3 is there. And uh, your T4 is here. So during positive half cycle, as T1 and T2 are conducting, this positive is reaching here and through the conducting T1, it is getting here also, negative is reaching here. Okay. So this T3 is now actually forward bias because T3 is aligned in this format now. So it is forward bias now. At that time we are triggering it. So naturally T3 will be turned on. Similar the case with T4 also. Because for the T4, negative is there at this terminal. And the positive it is getting by conducting T2. Okay. So T4 and T3 could uh, directly switch on by giving, giving uh, firing signal at uh, an angle pi plus alpha. So by the conducting T1 and T2, T3, T4 will move on to conduction and uh, at the very instant when T3 and T4 starts conducting, T1 and T2 will be thrown off from the, I mean, it will be commutated because of the conducting SES T3 and T4. Because the supply is already reversed, so that it is coming under the natural commutation. Okay. Now, if we look at the waveforms, you can see that uh, this output voltage waveform, this red line now, this output voltage uh, is positive here. Similarly, current also positive. Means net power is positive during alpha to pi. Both are positive. Okay. Both V is and I S are positive because T1 and T2 are conducting. So power is positive. Positive power means what? Positive power means AC to DC load. Power is being transferred. Means AC source to DC load. Power is transferred. And during the interval, pi to pi plus alpha. What is the case? Here you can see pi to this is our pi. Okay. Pi to pi plus alpha. You know that Vs is negative. Whereas Is is positive. So the load therefore what does it mean? Power is negative. Means the load returns back energy to the supply system. But the net power is positive because power flow from AC source to DC load. No, because this is greater pi minus alpha. This duration it is this duration it is pi minus alpha where T1 and T2 are conducting. This much duration it is greater than this duration. No. So we can say net power flow is from AC to DC. Net power flow is from AC source to 
DC load. And it is very much clear from the output voltage equation also. Output voltage equation we have already derived that V0 is equal to, it is the same case as with the R load, no? So V0 will be 2Vm by pi cos alpha. Okay. So suppose we increase the value of alpha, like if alpha is here actually alpha which is this angle okay now if alpha is increased beyond 90 degree you know this is your pi by 2 now so if alpha is increased beyond pi by 2 as per this equation you can see that if alpha is greater than 4 alpha greater than pi by 2 what will happen this v naught will become negative no so average voltage v naught is negative means the load is an active load now there is a m of source e is also there okay so this operation of a full converter which is called the inverter operation full converter with firing angle delay alpha greater than pi by 2 or 90 degree which is called the inverter mode of operation it is called the line commutated inverter line commutated inverter that is normally being applied in the regenerative braking mode and source current is assumed to be positive when T1 and T2 are conducting. And source current is assumed to be negative when T3 and T4 are conducting. And the uh, circuit turn of time both uh, for both converter and inverter operations, we can write it as Tc, which is equal to pi minus alpha by omega. And uh, so we can conclude that a single phase full converter with an active load or an early load can operate in as in two modes. One is the converter mode. In converter mode, uh, is uh, supply power is fed from uh, AC source to the load side, DC load side, and in inverter mode, inverter mode uh, this power is fed to the source, fed back to the source from the DC load side to the AC source. Okay, for that actually uh, the load must be an active load and alpha should be greater than 90 degree. So when alpha greater than 90 degree and the load uh, voltage reversed in that condition, this will act as a uh, an inverter which is called the line commutated inverter which is made use of uh, made use in the uh, braking applications of dc drives okay so when we draw the quadrants of operation you can mark this single phase full converter with the average value of current and voltage as like this now means it can operate in two quadrants. In the first quadrant, it will be acting as voltage and current. Positive means AC to DC power flow. So that is the converter mode. And this in the fourth quadrant means it is minus V0 and I0 is positive. Voltage is average value of output voltage is negative. So it is the inverter mode. So, a single phase full converter which can operate in two quadrants. So, it is also called as a two quadrant converter.